Hey, what's up, everyone? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, we're talking salt mix. We're going to talk about three different brands of salt and things you may or may not know about when it comes to using them. So let's get to it. Okay, as I said in the opening today, we are looking at salt. This is not to say use one over the other, because we all have and swear by our own favorite salt mix. What this video is about will be what to expect from your favorite salt and what they are designed to do and not to do. I believe that in the end is that our hobby is a continual learning process and you need to keep an eye and mind open to a product that may be better than, may be better or do a better job than the one we're currently using. Also, before you decide to just switch salts, do your own homework and look up the information on your own. Take in as many sources such as YouTube forums and manufacturer websites. So this way, you can make an educated decision on what to use and what not to use. Okay, with that being said, let's go into the salts. The first one we're going to take a look at is uh, Instant Ocean. The Instant Ocean comes in two different styles. You'll see one with a purple label and one with the orange label. The one with the purple label is just Instant Ocean salt mix. And it's designed for fish-only tanks or tanks containing soft corals. If it's used in a system with more demanding corals, then dosing will definitely be needed. Uh, the second kind is Reef Crystals, which comes in an, with an orange label. And this is designed for reef tanks that contain more, uh, more demanding corals because the salt mix will have more vitamins and trace elements. And therefore, you'll do, have to do less dosing than the one with the purple label. Now, when it comes to the instant oceans, when you mix the instant ocean up to uh, a salinity of 1.025, your calcium is going to be between, uh, it was going to be rather 400, your magnesium will mix to 1350, and your DKH will mix to 11. So right there, you can see that as far as calcium and magnesium go, they're going to be at a lower level, so that's why it's going to, it's going to require dosing. When it comes to uh, reef crystals, mixed to the same salinity, it's calcium is going to be 490, magnesium will be, come in at 1440, and the DKH will be 13. Now, it's not necessarily means that your DKH is going to be 13 because you're doing water changes and it's going to dilute within your system. But you can see with the higher levels, the, there's going to be less dosing required. So let's get into Red Sea. Red Sea comes with the Marine Mix and the Coral Pro. Marine Mix is designed for fish, invert, or low nutrient SPS environments where the hobbyist supplements all of the individual elements on a regular basis. Now this information comes directly from their websites, so you can look this up on your own and make, form your own opinions of this. I am in no way professing one salt over the other. When this salt is mixed to 1.025, your calcium will be between 410 and 440, your magnesium between 1230 and 1310, and your alkalinity between 7.7 .7 and 8.2. So you can see with the calcium, you're going to have to dose when you use this salt. Now the Red Sea Coral Pro is going to be, um, contains higher levels of foundation elements, Required for accelerated coral growth. It's ideal for reef aquariums, in particular for LPS and SPS and growing out frags. When mixed to 1.025, your levels are going to be calcium between 450 and 475, your magnesium between 1340 and 1420, and your alkalinity between 12.2 and 12.7, as you can see on the chart that's shown here. 
Now, as you can see, the difference between the Marine Mix and the Coral Pro is that the Coral Pro is designed for our reef tanks, where the Marine Mix is designed for a tank with less demand uh, for these elements, such as a fish-only tank or a uh, soft coral tank. Now, the next salt I want to look at is the HW Marine Mix. This salt mix has been around for 50 years. It's a 100% synthetic salt, which means that the impurities have been eliminated from the mix. This salt is popular in public aquariums, marine wholesale operations, and aquaculturing facilities. It contains amino acids that promote coral growth. Now, when the, this salt is mixed to 1.025, its levels are the calcium will be between 4, 445 and 450, magnesium 1380, and KH, DKH will be at 9. Now, this salt I've just started using and experimenting with, and so far it's been pretty good in my aquarium, and the corals have reacted very well to it. It is by far among the three salts I looked at, the one that mixes up and um, the water becomes clear the quickest. So I'll be testing this more and more in the future and give you updates as I have more developments. Now, what does this all information all mean? Basically what it means is that you can grow coral, have a reef tank using any salt that you want. It just, you have to realize that certain salts have limitations and things that you'll have to do to add vital elements to grow coral. So what the takeaway from this whole video is, do your research, look at what you wanna use, what fits your budget, and look at the people who are using the salt and take a look at their tanks. If their tanks are outstanding or something that you admire, then you may want to try it. But do your homework, look at the information out there, and decide whether you are going to be able to manage an aquarium with this salt and take on the responsibility of either dosing, not dosing, having the kind of stocked aquarium that you want, or switching to a less demanding aquarium because of the salt limitations. So that's my video on salt, and I hope that um, you take away something from it. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. And as always, this is Scott, and I'll see you soon around the reef tank.